Hello and welcome to another show of the zoo. Today we're going to compare help desks versus service desks. And an expert on that topic is Peter Adams, who's joining me from Silicon Valley. Are you in the Santa Clara office today? Absolutely. I'm in our lovely new office here. Great, great location, great new office. They are quite nice, the new BMC offices in Santa Clara. Yeah. I know people are just happy to be in the office. Yeah, abs absolutely. We see a, a huge shift in energy here um, since we moved over to the new one. And, you know, it's just a, the modern facilities are, are great. More of a digital workplace than another place. Exactly, exactly. So in very, and we, we will spend the next few minutes drilling into service with help desk. Tell us a little bit, you've been part of BMC for a while. How long have you been in the ITSM industry? Yeah, probably ever since I started my, my professional career in, in the mid 90s, I, I actually joined a big technology company in, in Germany. And I started out in the internal IT organization. And while I was not part of the service desk uh, team, so to speak, at the time, um, the application team that I was part of, uh, we were actually deploying service desk software um, at the time. And so I've been involved in that topic for, yeah more than 20 years now. So, um, again, initially more from a usage perspective. Later on, you know, I shifted more to a vendor vendor perspective. But, um, so you really seen that shift from, we started talking about help desk and then the term service desk popped up later on. For the, to tell me, just in simple terms, what's the difference between a help desk and a service desk? Yeah, so help desk in general is an organization that provides, you know, help to users around technology issues. Something is broken, doesn't work anymore. You know, they may also answer questions, uh, but it tends to be, you know, a reactive type of support. And, and again, it tends to be a bit more technology focused. People can call in, they can help if they have an issue, maybe get some answers to questions. And that's it. It's very reactive model, right? Um, the shift, as you know, we talked about, happened in the '90s with the increased adoption of of ITIL, and uh, you know, when the concept of a, a service was becoming more and more popular, and um, you know, a service desk organization in the end, according to ITIL, is you know the point of contact between between the delivery organizations for a service. And, and the customer, you know, in an enterprise context, it would be, if you're talking about IT services, the IT organization and, um, and the internal employees that consume these IT services. And so um, it's, uh, it's, again, a, a more holistic view in that you're the single point of contact, you're handling, yes, break fix scenarios, you know, if something is broken, you handle that, of course, but you would also answer questions, uh, handle requests, uh, think about proactively communicating with um, the consumers of the service when it comes to broadcasts, etc. So it's a it's a much more holistic uh, view than a help desk, which typically it just waits um, and, and, uh, until something comes up and, and uh, helps the helps the user. Yes, the help desk is more. Uh, break fix driven it tends to be again there's no you know standard definition anywhere uh, so different teams may call themselves help they can have a bit expanded scope but that tends to be the trend and, and again the, the the model on the service desk side is certainly more holistic understanding what service you deliver and basically being the interface to the customer for that service if i'm an it or organization and i'm looking at my company the company that i'm Services, whether it's my own internal or external, whatever, whoever I'm supporting. Is it the natural move from just help desk to service desk, or should I just skip help desk? And, and, and even if I'm not a smaller organization, should I start with a service desk approach and become the holistic hub for all services in the enterprise? Or what was it? I mean, for? most organizations, I would say, have some point where people can call if they have issues. I mean, um, I would say that there's hardly any company that doesn't have a go-to guy, right? Uh, whether it's a formal team or an individual, it doesn't really matter. And, and so um, I would say help this is almost always there with how formally they're organized is a different thing, whether they have a ticketing system or not, et cetera. But, but it's always there in some way. Um, and then, you know, I think the transition to a service desk really depends on whether you 
make that step of defining what services you deliver as an organization, and could be IT, could be non-IT, and um, and then start thinking about, okay, well, what do my customers need in terms of proactive help, reactive help, et cetera. There's different, there's different aspects to it. Does the skill set change dramatically if you switch from a help desk to a service desk or you? I think so. I mean, in the end, if you, if you start introducing the concept of a service, you uh, have to think a bit more outside in, right? In the end, you uh, no longer care about, care about technology, you care about the outcome of, uh, f for the customer, right? And you care about, you, you, you look at them as a customer and you think about what do I need to do to make them happy according to our agreement. So I think you, you have to change the perspective on, on how you work with uh, your peers, so to speak. Um, Again, look at it more holistically. Uh, think about outside in, you know, what they want rather than you know what technology should have. Does it matter if you are a mature organization, or do you mature because you switch to service desk, or do you have to mature first and then switch to service desk? Yeah, what's the easiest way for? I know it's a little bit chicken and egg. Or we have a lot of customers. Yeah, so do you want to be a service desk organization, and but I talk to them. And I look at what they have, and they, 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 there are processes that have to be put in place. You can't just go overnight and say, "Oh yeah, well, by the way, we're no longer a reactive help desk. We are a full fledged service desk." What are what are some of those process driven things and technology driven thing and maturity level across IT that needs to take place before you? Make yeah. that? I mean, for me, moving from a technology focus to a service focus is certainly a level of maturitization in the company, right? So. You know, as you are making that shift, I think it's very clear that you're maturing your processes. You look at this again in much more terms of what's what's important as outcome for the customer rather than just you know fixing some technology issue. So for me, that's already a maturitization step. Whether you know you need to go in other areas around change management and, and all the other IT areas, I think that's you know. Uh, doesn't have to happen in order to introduce a service desk, um, um, but you know very often it goes in line because people tend to introduce you know ITIL processes in as part of a bigger initiative, and then they don't focus exclusively on service desk. They really look at at it entirely. Right? We've seen a lot of shifts across consumer technologies now enter the enterprise of so social, mobile, cloud. Look at some of that stuff, uh, and you look at your service desk. How important is it into if I'm going to buy myself a service desk software or build my own, whatever I'm going to do, whatever venture I go down there? How important is it to incorporate social and mobile and so on in 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 your services? Is there is there use cases where you can have a good social IT solution? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as with many areas. Um, the new technology concepts like mobile, social, uh, crowdsourcing, the cloud. I mean, all of this opens up new opportunities to deliver better service and to change the interaction patterns, right? And, and that applies to service desk as it does in many other business processes, right? And, and so, um, again, for uh, customers, it's an opportunity to engage differently with their internal employees, right? For the IT organization to engage differently with the internal employees, um, you could, um, you know, start supporting your users through chat, through social posts, etc. It's just, a, you know, a different, um, what sometimes it's called multi or omni-channel uh, support, right? That's, um, um, you know, that, that's one option. I think it also you really allows Make, make it easy for the customer to contact, contact you. And, yeah, and then there's the whole generational aspect in that, you know, younger employees tend to prefer different ways of interacting, right? I meant to ask you that. Have, yeah. you, have you seen that? That younger people want social and, and people like us older do not want social? <laughs> yeah. I only want the modern technology. I'm no millennial. Uh, I'm raising millennials. So, um, is, is it a generational gift? Because I think 
odd generation. It, it is. I, I think you know, as as you said, you know, I think everybody probably sees it most clearly as everybody at our age, right? It sees it most clearly with their kids, right? Um, in either a fifteen and a seven year old, and you know they do very different things and they interact very differently on the mobile devices. I mean, they do video editing and everything on a mobile device, which I could never imagine, right? So that's their standard modus operandi, so to speak. And, and you know, if I translate that over, then, you know, definitely I think there's a trend that younger employees want to engage differently. And we hear that, you know, from customers as well. Um, I mean, the other part of social IT is that it often allows you to introduce completely new ways how to um, yeah, how to get service. Uh, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, instead of sending an email, I contact the service desk through chat, right? That's just a different channel. But, you know, with uh, collaboration tools, you could start uh, introducing completely new, new concepts like peer support, right? You could, you could stand up uh, s smaller communities around a specific service like, you know, Mac technology or even specific locations, etc. And you can start... Um, you can start introducing peer-to-peer -peer support within the employees, right? Um, you could start thinking about, can I recruit promoters inside the employee base for specific IT services uh, so that they, you know, basically help promoting a certain new service. So there's many new ways of interaction that you can introduce. It's more than just using a different channel. It's, uh, it's, it's truly new concepts, how people work. And, and uh, again, that allows to shift a lot of the burden that traditionally sits with the service desk over to uh, to the business users. Right? Uh, so, so it has a lot of innovation potential. Yeah, no, and, and, and it's new in the enterprise. It certainly is a new, uh, if you look at the consumer world, for example, if something is wrong with your IT equipment at home, you don't call anyone, right? You Google the problem. Most likely there's... Yeah. Yeah, kind of answer, right? I mean, knowledge management is certainly ever more important with, you know, videos and images and everything. That's, you know, quite an established thing you do when you try to get help from about external services or technology. And, you know, people use that same concept inside the enterprise. Of course, right? How does self-service and the modern service desk work? Uh, used to be that Traditionally, that there was a place where you could, without calling anyone, or, 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 or well, you can either find the answer to to your question yourself, or you can request help without actually interacting with someone. It's very simple, very straight yeah. to the point. Does that change with the service desk? Is there new ways of, of servicing yourself? Yeah, I mean, uh, we already talked about the whole idea of peer-to-peer -peer support, right, or crowdsourcing, you know, availability of services where, you know, uh, similar to some external web pages uh, that uh, crowdsource the status of, you know, Facebook and other external um, um, social networking site, right, that, that you could crowdsource the, the availability inf information for an internal email service, right, and so, you know, as soon as multiple people say it's unavailable, you kind of have a policy that says, yeah, then, then must, something must be wrong, right? It's a different way of monitoring what's going on. So peer-to-peer uh, -peer support, again, there's different ways um, um, how you can augment the traditional self-service that used to be about knowledge and requests, right? Filling out a form, submitting it. You can augment that with very different um, 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 uh, interaction patterns, and in many cases, you know, once you start bringing mobile into the mix, then um, it also changes how to submit requests because with a mobile device, you know where users are and who they are, and you know you don't need to fill out uh, 20, 30 questions on a request form anymore. You know, you have a lot of contextual information. You have a lot of um, um, uh, yeah, metrics on the system, uh, sensors on the system, and, and you could very easily uh, you know, submit a request without filling out 20, 30 questions, right? So even within the established pattern of submitting a request, you can have ways how that changes. Right? Yeah. No, it's, I've also seen how uh, when, you re when you request a service, um, for example, peer-assisted selection is starting to become more popular in enterprises, right? We don't buy anything on Amazon without first re reading rating and reviews yeah, yeah. we're going starting to have rating and reviews in their service catalogs now 
and people are using that as guiding tools to pick the things that you know that their peers are suggesting and yeah, and, and yeah. same for health knowledge articles right um, and as soon as this is voted up very highly and used very often right then you know in general i think that's an indicator that the article should be ranked higher within the knowledge search algorithm so to speak and, and you know that's another effect what about the proactive service desk i know it's a little bit far out but where individuals like myself is not a part of IT, but who's a business manager, um, where the service does know that my batteries are dying and so they ship one to my laptop before it happens. So they know I'm going on a trip to India. So they switch my network coverage automatically. When do you think we're gonna see that? Are we there yet today? Or do, do we still need manual labor to push button and make phone calls as well? Yeah, I don't think we see that pervasively today. I think, um, you know, customers and vendors, you know, often implement very specific use cases, but uh, what lacks is a, a very pervasive coverage for that, um, for those proactive use cases. But, you know, as, as you stated, it's uh, highly interesting, uh, has a lot of potential. Um, uh, you have to decide, I think, as a company, how much about the users you do want to track because you know it all depends on a uh, big data system uh, where a lot of information would be stored. Do you you know want to go and track uh, exactly where people are located at a certain point in time? You know, do the country specific uh, work regulations even allow that? So th there's you know a couple of complications in here, but. Uh, that's certainly the, the next step to provide a more comprehensive coverage around this proactive service desk uh, scenario. So. There's actually a question I, I used to get, not so much now, but I used to always get that around mobility is that, can we track our workers? So, yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think within very confined ways, then yes, uh, as you say, right? but um, I mean, it's not unusual for a uh, field service agents, you know, to share the location, I think, is that is part of their job, then it's fine, right? Uh, yeah. To yeah. just generally track people <laughs> is always a bit, a bit trickier, right? That is interesting, very good. Uh, if I want to mature and become, you know, going away from React to help this, becoming part of a, a larger digital workplace that has a modern service desk, what's what some of the first things I should look at? Where, where do I start? It's such an overwhelming project. Yeah, I think the, the first opportunity probably would be um, to, to look at topics or domain areas outside of, um, of IT, right? Um, like facility we, management, HR. Facilities, HR, et cetera. I mean, a service is a service. It doesn't have to be an IT service. Um, that's probably the area where the concept of, of you know, service management has been established first. Um, but it certainly applies as well to um, HR, to facilities and, and many other areas. And um, I think, you know, once you established all these interaction patterns for your service, that's very easy to translate that over to, uh, to other um, domain areas. And I think it will in increase the, the traction of any kind of self-service solution if you do that, right? So it promotes the digitalization of the, of the service desk, if you bring more content into it, people will be drawn into it, will use it more frequently, and I think that in general allows you to promote much more of, of these advanced new features, right? Uh, that, that's certainly, I would say, the, the big first step that many companies can and should take. What about if I'm looking at the solution, do I go on-premise or, 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 or do I go cloud, or does that matter, or is that a personal opinion? It used to be that if you don't, you don't go cloud, you're a loser. But I've spoken to a lot of corporations that are giving me good points of why not. Is there a, is there a benefit to go either way? Well, I would say, you know, um, I think these days cloud should almost be the default unless you have a very good reason of installing on-premise. And some organizations have, right, for regulatory security reasons, et cetera, they, they may have that, uh, that requirement. Um, but, you know, if that's, um, unless that's the case, then I would say, you know, why not move to the cloud? I don't see any 
big value for providing a good IT service in you know running your service desk software or your ITSM software right um, in house that doesn't necessarily have any contribution to the IT service itself. It can provide a perfectly fine, if not even better, service if you don't have to worry about that, right? Um, worry about upgrades and all these things. So. Um, but you know the approach that I would recommend. You know, think about cloud first, and then if there are good reasons, then yes, you may have to run this on premise as well. And you know, we certainly um, have a, a dual strategy on our side to support both. Very good. Well, great, Peter. I really appreciate you taking the time coming to the zoo and talking about service desk and help us. It's always informative to have you here. Thanks. Uh, absolutely appreciate it. Thanks for. Thank you. And for the rest of okay. you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.